Hello everybody and welcome to Ian's Brick. So last week uh, I went to a brick festival, uh, fairly local to where I lived in in a place called Eastleigh which is near Southampton. It was called the Southampton Brick Festival uh, and it was run, run by the people that run all the brick festivals around the UK. There are plenty of them, different locations nowadays. I've been to quite a few uh, brick festivals now over the last few years and they've always generally been uh, very very uh, well attended and fairly successful, one or two more so than others. Uh, but this was a particular particularly busy event. It was held on Sunday the 28th of April uh, 2024 and it was at the Places Leisure Centre in Eastleigh. Uh, so Eastleigh for me is around about a half hour drive away so it's a relatively easy place for me to get to. It's a place that I hadn't actually been to specifically before. I've been to Eastleigh but not to the actual Places, places Leisure Centre and I have to say the venue was really really good in my opinion from a trader's point of view. A really really nice big hall, it was very airy, lots and lots of space which was great um, and also um, uh, there was uh, sort of a, a very very good um, phone signal as well which means I could take credit card payments. I had absolutely no problems at all taking card payments and as a venue I think it, is a, it lends itself very very well to um, these kind of events, to these larger events. Um, one thing I will say about it though is I know that when the public were um, arriving the car park filled up very very quickly and apparently parking around that area was just a particular nightmare now there was quite a large car park there um, and I managed to get parked up no problem because I was at the event quite early in the morning and, and I unloaded the car and then went to park it and that was fine but I think because the leisure centre was also open and you have all the gym and the usual leisure centre facilities and there was a big swimming pool there as well which was very very busy as I was uh, loading the car back uh, in the in the afternoon um, when the event had finished uh, the, the swimming pool was very very busy so I maybe think that uh, the leisure centre sort of underestimated how many people would be going to the leisure centre and what kind of issues that would cause traffic wise but um, from a traders point of view it was a very very nice uh, hall to have the actual event in. Um, it cost me around about £150 I think it was for my two front tables and one backing table. I think the prices for brick festivals they, they, they are changing every now and again but I think it was around about £135 for the two front tables and then around, around about another £15 um, for the backing table so that wasn't too bad it's fairly average for these kind of events to be to be honest to be, to be fair they are sort of starting to creep up a little bit more than that and I have paid more uh, at other events in the past for that but this this was sort of um, what, what is fairly standard um, for Brick Festival um, now the setup <clears throat> setup was okay uh, there was a little road down the side of the uh, leisure centre um, where you could sort of take your car or your van and unload at the back of the hall uh, but then because of the positioning of where my table was I then had to walk right back across the hall again to um, to, uh, to to load my table and to move my Lego sets. Now I don't tend to bring a trolley or anything like that. I know a lot of people a lot more organised than me have a lot more space and bring trolleys and things but I just don't have a lot of space in my car once I've got all the Lego in to have a trolley so it does mean a few trips and back and forth from the car but it wasn't too bad and once I'd unloaded the car I then moved it into the main car park um, <clears throat> when the event had finished at the end of the day uh, the there was sort of a gate to this little road at the side which was locked to start off with um, and uh, so I ended up just moving the car to the front of the building and then um, loading the car up that way taking all my boxes sort of through the main reception area which is a little bit weird it was quite busy but it, it was fine it wasn't too bad. I know some venues there can it can be quite tricky sometimes for getting in and out of these places, but it, it wasn't too bad. Certainly not the worst uh, worst venue from that perspective. Um, so the event itself opened at 10 a.m. and what was interesting there was a sort of a, a small area of the hall, around about maybe a quarter, maybe a little bit less than a quarter of the hall, which had been cordoned off. Now I assume that they were going to use that as part of the Brick Festival. For whatever reason, they didn't have enough traders, displayers to use that. But what they were, they, they did use that space for, especially early on in the day. All the people that were queuing for 10 o'clock, they actually got them to queue inside the leisure centre. And actually, that worked very, very well. It did mean there was a bit of a space there for the rest of the day, which was unused. Um, but for that particular uh, period there, it was actually a really good time for people to queue indoors. Because I think it was raining as well in the morning as well. So rather than having people stand in the rain, it actually worked 
very well that people were able to queue inside. Uh, it made it a little bit daunting for the traders like myself inside because um, it means we could see everybody and thinking that, that queue is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we knew we knew it was going to be a, a very very busy event. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I wasn't disappointed how busy it was. It was just absolutely um, just busy from the start. The first hour and a half for me particularly, I was just crazy busy. And of course, I do get a lot of people recognising me from from the YouTube channel, which I which I get, and I, I do like to have a chat with people. But um, I can't always chat as long sometimes as I'd like to to some people. But it's fine. A lot of people came back later on and sort of had more of a chat later on, so that kind of worked okay. And I had a couple of selfies here and there. And even a couple of autographs as well so if you did ask for a selfie or autograph I'm still new to all of this kind of thing it does seem a little bit odd sometimes but people like them and I don't mind obliging um, so I'm happy to do that if anybody ever wants that at a future event so it's always sort of a, a nice thing to have uh, happen um, so as for how the day went as I say I had a lot of sets with me um, in total I took 146 box sets. So what I mean by a box set is a set, either a very, very small one, can be like a little gift with purchase or just a small uh, set to, uh, to a really, really big set. So anything, anything from that size in between. I had a lot of what I call sort of medium to small size sets. I didn't have too many huge sets with me this particular uh, uh, brick festival. Um, so I had a lot of sort of medium to smaller size sets, which means I could fit more into my car. And um, to be quite honest, it, it, I was I was astounded at how well things sold. I probably could have taken a load more stuff with me and sold even more stuff. But to be fair, I was happy with what I did sell on the day. So of those 146 boxes that I took with me, at the end of the day, at the end of the event, which finished at four o'clock, I only had 29 of those sets left. Uh, and most of those were generally some of the smaller ones, to be fair. A couple of larger ones, but generally it was the smaller ones. Uh, so that means I sold 117 of those box sets, which for me is a very, very good return on an event like that. Um, I also took some poly bags with me as well. And I sort of displayed those um, separately just on a little, little ball, which I sort of pinned up. And um, I took, um, I think there's a variety of about 12 different poly bags. So I didn't have a huge selection of different poly bags, but the ones I did have there, I took a total of 77 poly bags. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, there were 36 left, which means I'd sold 41. So I'd sold slightly more than half. So most of the money that I made was on the larger box sets. But again, there's some money to be had on these poly bags as well. Some of them I got for free, some of them I'd paid for. And there were a variety of prices, anything from around about four or five pounds to the small cheaper ones to I think I had a couple of these Star Wars ones which I was selling for 15 and I sold a few of those. So of the big box sets that I took with me these are um, the larger sets that did sell that I was sort of charging sort of the most money for but they were the bigger sets so um, I sold 10262 the Aston Martin and I sold that for £175, bit of profit from what I paid for that originally. I also sold, I was really happy about this, 10268 the Vestas wind turbine and I sold that for £250. Uh, this is a set that I've actually taken to quite a few brick festivals and events prior to this. I think I've taken it to four or five and it just hadn't sold. I actually lowered the price a bit on this one as well so I think originally I was asking about 280 maybe that kind of figure for it and I thought it's not selling nobody's nobody's budging it was towards the end of the day actually but eventually it did sell at 250 so I'm pleased about that again there was a profit in there for me not as much as I probably would have liked but again I've sold the set so that's you know I'm happy with that really I also sold 10292 the friend's apartment for 250 pounds uh, this is a set that only retired at the end of last year um, but obviously it's quite a popular set now I think uh, with um, uh, Matt Perry's death I think that's obviously sort of put a bit of a spike on this particular set so uh, yeah it is a, a set that sold um, reasonably early on I think I seem to remember I also sold 21304 which is the ideas Doctor Who set now I'd only actually got this from an auction fairly recently and I took it with me and I sold it for 185 pounds um, I think my buying price for that wasn't much lower than that. So, again, only a small profit. So a lot of these sets I buy from auction, I'm not intending to get huge profits from them. But I like to take these sets because, for me, um, I like to have different sets on my stall than a lot of other people. I know a lot of other people at these events have sets which are still currently available or which were maybe retired only last year. And, yes, I had a few of those sets myself as well. Uh, but I do like to sort of mix it up with some older sets. Uh, and a lot of my older sets I've already 
already sort of sold on. So this is why I use these auction sites um, in here in the UK and I buy a bit of Lego off them. So yeah, my profit margins aren't great on those, but I am still managing to sell these sets on for a little bit of profit, which is always nice. I also sold 40501, which is the uh, wooden duck. Um, and I also sold 40504, the minifigure tribute, and also the red beard. And these, are, these three sets are all from the Lego house uh, trip to Billund that I made earlier in March. Um, and I was able to get some decent prices for those, between 130 and 140 pounds for each of those sets. Uh, not quite, but nearly doubling my money on a lot of those. So um, that was the purpose, really, of this uh, Billund trip. To, uh, to Billund in Denmark, to, to the Lego house, was to buy these sets that you can't get anywhere else and sell, sell them on at Brick Festivals. A couple of those sets had been signed by the designers as well, hence a slightly higher um, price for those. So normally you wouldn't maybe charge as much for those sets, um, but I think because they've been signed by the designers, it was difficult to price them really. But I obviously got it right because pretty much from the start, all three of those sets sold fairly, fairly quickly. So I'm really pleased that uh, I sort of, I feel as though I got the pricing about right on those without being sort of to going too high on those. Um, I also sold 43179 the Mickey and Minnie buildable tribute. I'd taken that to a previous festival, it hadn't sold, so it's nice to sell it at this festival. Um, £150 I got for that, so again, not a great deal of profit on this from the original buying value. It is a set that hasn't really increased that much in value, but again, I have sold it now, made a bit of profit, and that's what this is all about. I also sold 75904 the Scooby Mystery Mansion. Scooby Doo, uh, this is a set again I got from auction. I uh, got £240 for this. Uh, what was interesting about this set, I, I did make a bit of profit on this one. I can't remember how much I paid for this one. Maybe... I, yeah, I can't. I actually can't remember what I paid, but there was certainly a little bit of profit in there for me. But what was interesting about this particular set, it was the uh, the Velma minifigure. Uh, that was kind of what drove up the the price of this particular set. I think it was the only set that the Velma minifigure was available in. Uh, these sets are from 2015, so they're sort of nine, ten years old now. So uh, they are getting difficult to get hold of. But it, it was the box was in excellent condition. So well done, the person that uh, picked that up. I did actually see that the same set was on another store. Um, and it was on at the same price actually so that made me think actually I'm, I am pricing my sets appropriately because other people were pricing those sets at the same um, prices as me as well so it's nice to know that I was getting some of these prices uh, the same as other people. And uh, the final set over £100 which I sold was 75980, the Attack at the Burrow, the Harry Potter set. £120 I got for that. Again, this retired a couple of years ago, now a year and a half ago. And I think the original buying price for this was £90. So again, not much of a profit on that one. It's a set that doesn't seem to have increased and been that popular. Maybe it was too expensive to start with from Lego. But uh, yeah, it's still a little bit of profit and I've managed to sell that on uh, now. Um, some sets I didn't sell some of the larger sets. Um, there was 60302, the City uh, Rescue Wildlife Rescue Operation. I was trying to sell that for £60. Again, I think I bought that set um, just over £40, so I wasn't putting much of a hike on that particular set. This is a set, bizarrely, that's been available um, recently again somewhere. I think one of the uh, online stores somewhere has managed to find some stock. I can't remember who it was now. So, uh, yeah, maybe that's, that's what's holding this one back. Again, it's a city set, so maybe not quite as popular but there's some interesting, some interesting animals in that uh, particular set so I was hoping it might do better than it has. I also didn't sell 21328 this uh, Ideas Seinfeld set. I had that on at £65 which I don't think that was much above recommended retail price. I think I got it slightly cheaper than that when it was on uh, sale at Lego. Um, Seinfeld is a show that um, isn't particularly that popular here in the UK. I think even when it was on, I never really used to watch it. I did occasionally. There are some funny episodes that I don't mind it, uh, but certainly from a UK perspective, it, it's never been as popular as, say, something like, for example, Friends, which is hugely popular and remains hugely popular. But Seinfeld, for whatever reason, never really caught on here in the UK, and I think that does uh, have a an impact on on Lego sets and, and sets like that based on TV shows that maybe aren't as popular here in the UK uh, as to somewhere say in the US where it probably is a lot more popular and something like the Seinfeld set will probably go for a lot more money over there but hey ho so I've still got that to sell at another another event another set that didn't sell 76151 this Spider-Man Venomosaurus this is a set I picked up by accident on Amazon um, they were supposed to I, was, I asked for one set and they sent me the wrong set so I still don't know how that happened I 
was asking £85 for this. I keep lowering the price on this one, but it doesn't seem to want to sell. So uh, maybe I'll have to lower that a little bit more for next time. So I've taken that to two or three events now. As I have with 76166, the Marvel Avengers Tower, um, £125 I had this on at, but yeah, this just doesn't seem to want to sell. Even though the sold eBay prices on this are £125, £130, £140, at events it just doesn't seem to want to sell. So uh, if you are after the Avengers Tower and you do go to any of my Brick Festivals, uh, the chances are I'll have one for sale because I've not only got that one that I took to the event, I do have another one in my storage collection as well. So I'm hoping to sell those on sooner rather than later. And one final set which didn't sell, which I was a little bit surprised about, was 76394, the Forks Phoenix. I had that on at £70. Uh, uh, it didn't sell. I'd had um, sold some previously at my previous event for, I think it was 65 to 68 so maybe that little bit of a price uh, hike I put on there didn't work, so maybe I need to reduce that again. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with all the sets that I did sell um, at the event. Um, talking about some of the poly bags, uh, the ones that did the best, uh, there was... Uh, 30435, the uh, Harry Potter um, build, um, I think it's build your own Hogwarts. I had, uh, I took eight of those with me and I sold all eight of them. And it's really, really weird because at the last festival I went to, last event I went to, I had them on at the same price, which was £6, and I only sold a couple of them. So it's really weird how some festivals you'll sell more than others. It's very, very odd. So I sold all eight of those. Um, I took ten of the 30662, the um, uh, Animal Crossing. Um, um, pumpkin garden and pumpkin garden set even and I had them on at eight pounds uh, and I saw six out of the ten that I had with me now I know one of the other um, people at the event uh, Fred from Hillian's Bricks was there he had loads of poly bags he had a lot of similar poly bags to what I was doing and he probably had a slightly better deal on I think he had like buy one for a certain amount of money buy two for this amount of nine two for nine pounds I think it was three for twelve uh, and four for fifteen. So I'm not sure whether the Animal Crossings were part of that, but he said he'd sold. He had like a big box of them. He had more than I did. He had loads, and he'd sold quite a few of those. So maybe that's why I didn't quite sell out on those ones. But uh, it wasn't too bad. Six out of ten at eight pounds each is not to be nothing to be. Uh, to, to turn your nose upon. Um, and another set I sell 6 out of 10 that I took with me was 500 These are uh, Rebel A-Wing uh, pilots from Star Wars and I was selling those at £6 each and for whatever reason they were fairly popular on that particular um, at this particular event. Uh, one that didn't do so well was the uh, 30652, the Doctor Strange poly bag. I was trying to sell those at £7. I only sold two out of the ten that I took with me. Um, so yeah, maybe they weren't as popular. Maybe I need to think about my pricing for those for um, future events. Some sets that I did also finally sell. I mentioned the Vestas uh, wind turbine, which I'd uh, managed to finally sell on. I also got rid of my final 3661. That's a City Bank set. I sold that for £65. I bought these a long, long time ago. These are sort of like 10, 12 years old. I think I'd had three or four of them, actually. And uh, ever since I've been to all of these brick festivals, which I started in 2021, I'd always taken a City Bank. And they were quite slow sellers, but they did eventually all go. I paid around about £25 for them back in the day and I sold them for £65. Yes, there was a long hold on those, and but yes, finally sold them all. I actually really liked the sets at the time, but for whatever reason they just maybe weren't quite as popular. Maybe because it was a city brand, who knows. But yeah, finally got rid of my last one of those. And also I had one of these and it was 10291, the Queer Eye set. Uh, I think I bought that for around about £39 and I sold it on for £58. So only a small profit. It's around about a third profit. Uh, again, it's a set um, based on a TV show. The TV show's not particularly that well known, I think, in this country. Uh, I don't, it must be on one of the satellite channels or cable channels somewhere, but I don't, I, I've never seen it. Um, never seen it on TV anywhere. So yeah, maybe that's another one that held it back. But yes, and I think that was a good a good price. I, I think the recommended retail price for that was around about the same. So whoever bought that didn't really pay over the odds for it. I still made some profit myself. Things that always do sell well for me at these brick festivals, and I always say this, are my gifts with purchase. So whenever I buy things from, uh, generally it's from Lego or Lego.com, <clears throat> they'll have a promotion or a special offer where you spend a certain amount of money and you get a free set or two free sets, depending on how much you spend. So I'm always picking up these gifts with purchases from Lego. And in total, I took uh, 31 different 
um, gift with purchases. Yes, there have been that many. There were a couple of duplicates, but generally they were all individual ones. And they range from sort of the very, very small um, sets like the um, the, uh, the Brickheads uh, Bride and Groom, for example. Um, I think I was selling those on at £10 each. Um, up to the sort of the more expensive ones, say like the um, uh, the Death Star 2 from Star Wars from last year's May the 4th promotion, or the uh, Micro Rocket um, launch pad as well, and I was sort of selling those for sort of upwards of about £45. Um, so out of those 31 uh, free gifts with purchase, these are sets that didn't cost me a penny, I sold 30 of those, and the only one that was left was one of the Wedding Brides, 40383, I'd actually taken two of those, and I did sell a, a bride and a groom to Together. This lady wanted them for some uh, wedding cake toppers. Obviously, I had a bride then not left on on her own, and she didn't sell. But uh, yeah, it was nice to sell pretty much all of those gift with purchase. And again, I got my I think I got my pricing right as well. I priced them from anything from ten pounds for the less popular ones to I think around about forty five. I think my most expensive one was uh, four or five nine eight. The Gringotts, the Harry Potter Gringotts bank. I sold that for forty eight. I think they had been a little bit higher uh, previously when they first came out. They were selling for sort of upwards of uh, sixty pounds ish but uh, they've sort of settled down a bit now but I still think 48 pounds for a set that I got for nothing basically for buying other Lego sets is, is not bad and uh, these um, these sort of smaller size gifts with purchase are always very very popular at these brick festivals so I will continue to take them and I'm starting to run a bit low on a few now but um, I st there's always new ones that are coming out so I will try and stock up on those when I can. Um, one thing I will say, as I mentioned it earlier, but my um, taking card payments, I use a thing called a Sum Up Card, card reader. I think probably you can only get them here in the UK. There will be other things if you're not based in the UK um, that are available uh, wherever you live. Um, I do actually have a link as well. So if you don't have a Sum Up Card reader and you wanted to get one, uh, there is a link which I'll leave in the description of the video. Um, if you do get one of those, I think you can get some money off. It says up to £100, but I think that's only if you buy like the top of the range the most expensive card reader but have a look at the link follow the link have a look at the different card readers that are available I think there's money off all of them if you use my affiliate link and uh, say so, yeah just sort of check it out I mean you might not want it for Lego you might want it for, for other things as well but once you've got the card um, they're very very um, good mine has worked all the time I know some people say that theirs maybe don't work from time to time apparently once you signed up with some up you can actually now use your phone as well uh, to take the card payments. I'm not sure whether you still have to buy the card reader to start with. You, probably you do. I've just got the cheapest one, the most simple one, and for me it generally works okay. As long as there's a good phone signal, um, it's absolutely fine. That's it. I had absolutely no problems at all with my card reader on this particular event. Uh, and I did take most of my money, I think, as well, using the card reader. It normally works out at around about 75% of the money that I take at these things are people using cards and phones. Loads of people just have phones now. They have all their cards attached to the phone and they just scan the phone over and it works absolutely fine. And you can give receipts out and things like that, send them by text or email. And it just works really, really well. Uh, so the only times I've ever had problems with some of is when some of these venues with these big steel buildings, I think it was the ice rink at Milton Keynes when I went there uh, last year, it was just awful signal. Uh, but that's more about the the, um, the Brick Festival people picking the right venues where there is a, a decent signal. If there's not, then they need to have Wi-Fi codes available for the traders at least. But um, yeah, if you do want to get some up card reader, uh, try and use that affiliate link. I says it probably will only work for people in the UK, um, but certainly if you're outside the UK, have a look and see what is available uh, where you live, because I'm sure there are some fairly cheap ones. I think the cheapest one from Sum Up is around about 30, maybe 40 pounds. Um, and I say my little, little card reader has been working really, really good. Um, one thing I will say as well uh, is that I did actually meet quite a few people at the event, so thank you to everybody that came over to say hello. Um, and there was one period, sort of early on in the day, where I had a queue of people waiting to use the card reader. Obviously it takes a minute or so for each transaction to go through, for me to get myself sorted and I'm putting things in bags for people. 
And literally every person was like, watch your YouTube channel, really, really like it. Oh, thank you, I'll do watch your YouTube. And there were loads of people in line. So thank you to all of those people that just sort of mentioned that they do watch my channel. It is much appreciated. You always wonder when you make the videos like this, how many people are actually going to tune in and watch a lot of your videos. But it seems that people do, and people do seem to genuinely like it. So I do appreciate that. Um, one thing I will um, mention as well is uh, that I had a few people who do have their own YouTube channels as well that came up to say hello. And they all did their own uh, reviews of the actual event day and I did get mentions I think in each of these three different channels so thank you very much to each of you for mentioning me and if you if you watch the videos closely you might even catch me in the background of a few of the uh, videos as well sort of beavering away busy talking to people so I'll put links in my description as well for the actual videos uh, that they did for the Southampton Brick Festival and that's for uh, Snoop Loves Bricks, um, Minifig Jez did one as well as did Brick Bargain. So check out all the three of their videos. They're really good and uh, again different opinions on how the Brick Festival went. Um, there were some good things, some negative things, some you know things for improvement. So it's interesting to always see other people's views of different events and what they thought uh, and uh, yeah just check out those videos because I, I, you know, I do get some mentions in there myself as well and it's all fairly positive so that's good. So thank you very much to those reviews of the events and for uh, bigging me up basically. It's much appreciated. Uh, and uh, just one final thing really is the event brick that you get. You probably saw it in the thumbnail, um, but every event that you go to, for Brick Festival at least, you get one of these, which is a, a brick which tells you the event that you've been to. Now this is an interesting one. So they date them, so they have the date on the side there. 2024 and we have the venue as well the Southampton Brick Festival now on the back of these they're normally just plain on the back but they started to print them on the back as well and I think the, the idea is that once you collect a few of these it'll form some kind of shield or something like that I would assume you have to go to all of them so I'm probably only at another two or three Brick Festivals for the remainder of the year so I probably won't get all of them but what is nice is because I've got a few of these now and let's say it's mainly from Brick Festival um, but they all sort of go together and I must start taking these with me to the festivals because these are all the festivals that I've got bricks for. There are more brick festivals that I had been to which I didn't get these bricks for for whatever reason but uh, yeah I've got a few of these now. I don't mind I don't get one at every single event but they're, uh, they're nice little things to have and they do start to build up and you can see uh, that all the events I've been to over the years. So I think the top one is the was the, um, the big brick convention that was at Bournemouth back in uh, 2022. Uh, all of the other ones are all brick festivals um, from last year including the Christmassy one which I got when I went to the Croydon event uh, and obviously you see I've been to Bournemouth twice and, and Weston twice so I've got a few uh, repeats as well so there was uh, two events last year at both of those locations but yeah I do like these and if, if anybody does any sort of events like this it's always nice to have something similar uh, to sort of get for the traders and the displays because I just think it's just a like, nice little memento of the day and uh, I do appreciate getting these things so thank you very much to the people at the Brick Festival for giving these out. That is pretty much it from my review of the Brick Festival. All in all, it was, for me, a very, very successful event. Um, to sell the majority of my sets was was brilliant. And I sold, I have to say, I sold them quite early on as well. I sort of got to a point at sort of half eleven thinking, I'm starting to run out of sets here. And that was quite early on in, during the day. But as the day went on, even though I sort of had less and less sets left to buy, people just kept buying them. They were still looking at my sort of um, paltry selection <laughs> of uh, uh, box sets sort of left uh, left on the table, but people were still buying them. And, and at the end of the day, uh, I literally went home with just one box, one big box of all the Lego sets in one box. And it was so easy to sort of pack up for the end of the day and uh, and go home. I say the event finished at four o'clock and I think I'd uh, packed up by half four and was home for five o'clock. So it was actually a really, really good day. Nice short drive for me home. And and uh, I just unpacked the car when I got home and uh, I've, I've dealt with it uh, later during the week, sorted all those sets out uh, since I've been back. But yeah, it was a very, very good event. I say I'm in other Brick Festivals later on in this year. I think venues wise, I think I'm in Leicester Brick Festival, which is towards the end of September. 
and I'm also in the Croydon Brick Festival, uh, which I think is sometime in November. And there is another one as well, and I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but yes, I am at a few other Brick Festivals this year. So if you go to any of those events, do keep an eye out uh, for me. Uh, I say Brick Festival do do a lot of events nowadays. I know they had one today in Milton Keynes. They had one um, early earlier on in the week at another location. So they're all over the country nowadays. Obviously, I can only go to a few of them. I tend to go to about one a month and there are other different festivals out there as well which I will be going to as well but uh, yeah I think um, all in all I think uh, it was a very very successful day um, I had a really good day and uh, again thank you to all the people that uh, bought something from me it is very very much appreciated uh, and uh, all the nice comments that I get in the videos that I make as well so that's pretty much it again have a look at those links that I put earlier for the other videos uh, and for the sum up card reader um, click uh, click the like uh, and comment and uh, I'll try and reply to all your comments as best I can and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel that would also be much appreciated as well. Right that's it thank you for watching this video I did it all in one take which is fantastic no mistakes from me today uh, and uh, there'll be other videos coming up later in the week so keep an eye out for those I've got a few things coming through the post so there'll be definitely some haul videos coming up soon as well. Thanks for watching take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.